Hi, this is Tim with Faithfully Growing, coming to you with another growth moment. And today I'm going to do something a little different. Each month I host my friend Dr. Milan Chavakar on uh, a Zoom meetup where she talks about holistic health. Dr. Millen, as she will introduce herself, is a holistic health practitioner. And so today what I'm going to do is to share a talk that Millen gave earlier this week with you. And I hope that it's helpful. And as always, if this video is helpful, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And additionally, if you'd like to continue the conversation, you can join the Facebook group that I will link in the description of the video. But I hope you enjoy the talk by Dr. Millen. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you here. Um, I'm Dr. Millen Trevarker. I'm a nurse practitioner practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I have worked in family practice for almost 20 years and now moving into holistic health because I saw that the patients that did really well and actually truly healed were the ones where we really worked at length on lifestyle medicine, supplements, vitamins, nutrition, and um, looking at herbal medicine. So using herbal medicine as a way to treat disease rather than um, just all the pills. And I, of course, give out all those pills too, uh, big pharmaceutical, hypertension, diabetes, all that great stuff. Um, but um, really want to educate people about uh, what I do, uh, which is holistic and functional medicine, which is looking at the root cause of disease and it's a personalized medicine approach. So today I'm going to give you some pearls on boosting the immune system. And of course, every person is an individual. So I do want you to take the information as educational. And of course, um, if you have any issues, uh, this is a disclaimer that it's just for education and information. And of course you should talk to your um, primary care provider or health professional about any specific issues you have so you can get a tailored approach to boosting your immune system. Um, and I am part of the Institute of Functional Medicine. And so using some of their information that they give out to patients. So let's kind of dive in. And this is a quick presentation. I really want this to be more interactive um, at the end. I think we've decided to have more of an interface at the end. So I'll give you a little overview about what helps your immune system. And then we can have some conversation. Um, I also take care of uh, some of the patients who've had COVID and, and have had immune issues after having COVID. So um, this comes into play uh, a lot right now for, or is in our all of our minds right now. So the first thing that we want to look at that, you know, and this is all based on research. We know that um, our lifestyle really boosts our immune system. And the most important thing, which I think all of us are facing right now, um, we have a pandemic going on, there's been lots of shifts in our life, is stress. And reducing that stress is going to um, help uh, positively affect your immune system. And we know that people who are under chronic stress, they are negatively affected and get sick more often. So um, sort of when we're done with the talk, I wanna talk about some things that everybody does um, to reduce stress. Another important factor in our immune system is our sleep. And sleep is the time where our body rejuvenates and rests and heals. So if we're not getting enough sleep, obviously our immune system is taxed um, to do all those functions in a shorter period of time. Having a consistent schedule for sleep is really important. Having enough hours for sleep is really important. And uh, a lot of people are affected by their jobs. Um, I know there's a lot of studies on circadian rhythm and you can always go to my website. I have blogs and videos on circadian rhythm and circadian rhythm is basically our rhythm and, and how many hours we sleep and having um, sort of a regularity to our schedule. Um, one of the things that's really affecting our sleep today is our screen time. And so if you have a lot of blue light exposure, that is going to affect your sleep and the quality of sleep, the time 
and the number of hours you're getting. So having a really dark room, no exposure to screen time, at least an hour, if not two, before you go to bed, having that regularity. I use a phone um, and we could talk about that at the end. Some things you do um, to maintain regular sleep schedules. And the other important thing is to have light when you wake up. Uh, that light is actually stimulating and helps our, what's called our cortisol awakening response, which helps give us that energy during the day. So those are uh, important things about sleep. Another thing that's really important is movement. And we keep hearing this, exercise is great for our health, it lowers blood pressure, it prevents diabetes. And of course, by doing all that, it also raises the level of white blood cells that help us um, fight infection. And it also reduces stress. And of course, we just talked about how stress is affecting the immune system. So getting moving is really important to boosting our immune system, getting that circulation, getting those antibodies throughout our body. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be intense exercise. It could be walking. And we can talk about that too, about some things that would be good um, movement. And of course that's dependent on you as a person. And lastly, or one of the last things in, is, is nutrition. And what a lot of, we're hearing a lot about is the rainbow diet. And it's not Skittles, it's eating the rainbow, basically all the different colors of fruit and vegetables in your diet. Typically healthy people have about 10 servings per day. And I know I have trouble getting to 10 servings. Um, I think all of us do. And it's not something that is really part of the standard American diet, um, which we call sad because it is not good for our health. Um, but these uh, different colored fruits and vegetables have all the necessary vitamins and minerals for boosting our immune system. And last, uh, our social connections are important. And having fun, decreasing our stress, boosting our happy hormones, these are all things that are gonna be connected to our immune system. One thing I wanna do is sort of at the end is we can do a, if everyone wants to, is a laughter yoga exercise. And just laughing actually helps reduce our, our stress levels. And we could just start laughing and our body doesn't really know what we're laughing about. It just knows, oh, this person is laughing. This is happy. Let's release those hormones. So um, research has shown that laughter can be as beneficial as exercising and reducing depression. I was a little surprised by that research study. And it improves heart rate variability, which is gonna be sort of a new thing that you're gonna hear about heart rate variability. This is a big new topic of research um, that is also associated with health and the immune system. So now I'm gonna just go on to some of the nutrients that we can take to boost our immune system. We talked about food in different colors. Let's talk about some specific vitamins that might help you. And again, I'm not gonna go over dosages or what's the right dosage because I think that's going to be very individual. Um, the, the one of the great vitamins which we always hear about is vitamin C. Um, vitamin C prevents infections um, caused by bacteria and viruses. Um, when we give vitamin C during colds, we know that we get a boost in the immune system. It's a natural anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. And we all know our citrus fruits are great for vitamin C. I was surprised to find out cantaloupe has a lot of vitamin C. It actually has more vitamin C than citrus fruits. Um, and kiwi, mango, and pineapple. So those are some foods that you can get vitamin C from. Uh, and you know, we get a lot of imported fruits during the winter. So we have access to those. And of course, those may not be as rich as they would be if, if they were local and fresh and all that, but I think they're good sources of getting that as naturally as possible. Another great vitamin for boosting the immune system is vitamin D. And we know that we get vitamin D by sitting out in the sun. And during the winter, it's hard to get vitamin D. And I think it is linked to depression and the immune system. Numerous, showed, numerous studies have shown that it reduces the risk of colds and flu. There's been a lot of research on vitamin D and COVID 
and that people who are low in vitamin D actually had a, a exacerbation of COVID. Um, and we're finding that almost everybody is deficient in vitamin D. So vitamin D3 is sort of been given to a supplementation to everybody now. Um, you can get this in food. Cod liver oil has tons of vitamin D in it. Fish like trout and salmon and mushrooms. So those are natural sources of vitamin D rather than taking a pill. But most likely you will need to take a supplement as well. And of course, it's important to get your vitamin D tested with your provider. Another great vitamin is vitamin A. And that's gonna be our orange colored vegetables. Um, beef, uh, liver happens to be a good source of vitamin A, but sweet potato, uh, pumpkin, looks like I wrote spinach and carrots have a lot of vitamin A. And um, that can help fight infections and um, specifically for respiratory infections as well. So let's go over some other nutrients that are really important. And I put a bunch of nuts. I don't know if it's gonna have specifically the nuts I'm talking about, but um, nuts are great for you and have a lot of great fat and um, healthy fat and protein in it. Um, but I wanna talk about zinc and selenium. Uh, zinc is really important for boosting the immune system. Um, you can sometimes think about taking zinc lozenges when you're sick, um, that'll help with a cold. Uh, foods high in zinc are oysters, pumpkin seeds, beef, lobster, and beans. So your shellfish has a lot of zinc in it. And selenium is another important um, nutrient for immune function. It has antioxidant properties and boosts the body's defenses against bacteria, viruses, and cancer cells. It's also important for the thyroid. Uh, selenium is in a lot of foods. It's most importantly, it's in Brazil nuts. And so what I do is I eat three Brazil nuts every day. It's just an easy way to get selenium and a bunch of other nutrients that Brazil nuts have. It also fills me up. It's got, you know, good fat and protein and um, uh, selenium is also in tuna fish and meat. So some other natural foods that can help you boost your immune system. And of course, there's a lot more than this. This is just sort of a preliminary list for you. Uh, believe it or not, honey, uh, raw honey is a good demulcent. And that means that it helps with pain and inflammation of the mucous membranes. It has antioxidant properties and antimicrobial effects. I think sometimes you've heard of honey being used on a lesion. Um, it's been used for lots of things over the years. And garlic, fresh garlic is another great immune booster. It has something called allicin. And what you can do is take a raw garlic clove and crush it and go ahead and put it in your mouth. And that's how you're gonna get allicin into your body um, the best. Uh, you can also use aged garlic extract and both help with uh, severe infections, boosting the immune system and fighting viruses. Another natural food that you can eat is probiotics. Probiotics are good bacteria that support the health of the gut. And our gut is really important to protecting us um, and is a key factor in the immune system. So having gut health is gonna be important to fighting infections. We, a lot of us have dysbiosis, which is we have an abnormal growth of bad bacteria. And the way to improve that is by eating more nutrition foods, decreasing our sugar, and increasing our probiotics. And probiotic foods are, we have here on the picture, kimchi, um, anything fermented, yogurt, kefir, um, kombucha. These are really important to maintaining that good bacteria in your gut and preventing infections and boosting your immune system. So that is a quick rundown of a few things that can help boost your immune system and a few changes you can make to help your immune system. Again, I think the most important thing is getting an assessment of what your immune system function is like and determining, is there some changes you can make personally in your lifestyle and your food to help boost your immune system? And of course, with COVID here, everybody's really interested in how to boost their immune system and be in their optimal health in case they were to be exposed to COVID. Uh, but uh, 
there's a lot we can do on a day-to-day -day basis to, to, to do that. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks again, and I look forward to what lies ahead as we all continue to faithfully grow.